Hi, this is JB from No The Lights Over Arkham. Uh, welcome back to another The Mad Titan's Shadow playthrough. And this time I will be playing the second scenario from the campaign box. And it is the tower defense scenario. We are fighting two different villains. So there is Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive uh, against uh, Adam Warlock. And we are using uh, Adam Warlock's pre-built deck and playing on standard difficulty. So, uh, this scenario is a bit different than the usual ones, where you face only one villain. So we have two villains, which will uh, be active uh, separately. So we have this focus defense card that will uh, switch between these two main schemes. And uh, the scheme where it is attached to is the active uh, ski, uh, main scheme. Well, they both are active, but these uh, villains are active one at a time, so we won't be getting attacks from both each turn. Then we have the Avengers Tower, which has a, a damage threshold of 9, so we start from the setup by 1, and uh, we try to stop these villains from damaging the Avengers Tower because when it flips up over then we have another damage threshold and if that runs out we lose the scenario. So it's a pretty uh, complex scenario. I'm, I hope I won't do many play mistakes because it's a bit of a brain burner <laughs> at least when I tried it out quickly to just get the hang of the scenario mechanics. Then, uh, on top of that, we are playing with Adam Warlock. So, Adam Warlock is an interesting character. You have to build the deck using all of the four aspects and uh, e equal cards from all of the aspects. So, there is Justice cards, Protection cards, Leadership cards and Aggression cards in there, and also Basic cards. So, uh, we'll see how the pre-built deck works against the uh, uh, standard difficulty scenario to tower defense, so let's get started. We have pre-shuffled the decks, but before anything else, we have to still uh, look for uh, one... Uh, what, what was it called? Just checking. Yeah, I think I forgot. Yeah, I need to uh, search the encounter deck for a copy of Black Order Besieger and put it in the playing gate with to shuffle the encounter deck. So we'll just uh, search for that. Just a moment. Oh, yeah, and uh, this uh, damage comes from this actually. Here, so we start without any damage on the Avengers Tower, but I think boss response after a Black Order Besieger engages you, choose to either deal one damage to Avengers Tower or deal two damage to your identity, and I'll deal the damage to the tower. Okay, uh, we'll start by drawing our opening hand. So let's see, uh, we get a uh, Karmic Blast. Determination, uh, Charlie 27, Summoning Spell, I'm moving this a bit here so I can take my hand here, and then Audacity and the Gardener. So I think we want to get rid of the Black Order Besieger, so we could use Karma Karmic Blast to defeat that. Or we could uh, hit one of those. Now, uh, one thing I forgot to mention is that uh, these both have separate healths. If one of them runs out of health, they won't get defeated before the other runs out of health. So we have to coordinate it so that we uh, get one low and another low, and then maybe get both of them uh, knocked off at the same time because there are cards that will heal them. So. You don't want to give them a chance to heal that much. Okay, well, um, I'm thinking of keeping the Karmic Blast, Determination. Uh, I could use the Audacity. 
and uh, summoning spell is actually really good. Yeah, I'm keeping that. Mulliganing these. Well, I think I'm keeping all of it. Just using these to play. So first thing we do is to we'll use uh, Charlie 27 and Gardener to play the summoning spell. So the summoning spell is play only if your identity has the mystic trait max one per deck. Hero action discard cards from the top of your deck until you discard an ally. Put the ally into play and rate control. So we'll uh, search for an ally. So we get uh, Martin X. And Martin X is a 3 cost ally with 1 for 1 attack. Reduce the cost to play Martin X by 1 for. Or identity has the guardian trait. Well, it doesn't matter because it just comes into play. And uh, next, we will flip to Adam Warlock, and I will play uh, Karmic Blast using Determination and Audacity. So Determination. After you spend this uh, card, remove one threat from a main scheme, from the main scheme. Uh, so. I'll pick this one because we know that this will uh, this card uh, forces pawns after the player pays ends attach this card to the other main scheme so it moves here and uh, Proxima Midnight will be the active uh, enemy. So we'll uh, remove one from there. Then uh, this lets us deal one damage somewhere. I'll deal it on this guy. Then we'll hit four damage here. And uh, we'll uh, discard deal four damage to an enemy and discard up to four cards from the top of your deck. Deal one additional damage to that enemy for each different aspect. So let's see one, two, three, four. I'm going all in, so I'm just trying to get as many. Well, we got only two more damage, so well, at least it's something. And uh, Adam Warlock and Martin X will defeat the Black Order Besieger. And that is our first turn. So we draw back up to five. Oh, yeah, and Adam Warlock's uh, mage, uh, battle mage ability is that you can discard a card and do either aggression deal, two damage to an enemy, justice. To Threat from a scheme, protection, heal one damage from an ally, leader should keep a hero, plus one port and plus one attack, and plus one defense this round. So, pretty multi. <laughs> uh, multiple different options you ha can have with Adam Warlock. Okay, we're getting our hands, so in betweener, heroic intuition for justice, Warlock's gate, and uh, zone of silence. We'll go to the. Uh, we'll end our uh, player phase. So this moves here. We'll go to the villain phase. Uh, we add one threat, and these both are active. So we add one threat to both of them. Uh, Proxima Midnight attacks. So uh, in Proxima Midnight attacks, you choose to either deal one damage to Avengers Tower or Proxima Midnight gets plus two attack for this attack. So I'm. At this point, I'm just uh, letting Proxima hit the tower for one damage. Then uh, we'll take it on Adam Warlock. So I'm not defending, so 2 plus. Oh, sorry, wrong deck. 2 plus 1 is 3, so we'll take 3 damage. And the encounter card for this turn is. Uh, Proxima's power. Uh, Proxima Midnight activates against you, so we'll just repeat that. So uh, I'm putting one damage here, so we are at three damage on the tower. And I think I'm defending for this, so we won't take that much damage. So two plus two is four, so on two. And that is the turn. So that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. Okay, well, let's see. Mm, we have a Warlock's Cape, 
uh, after you resolve Adam Warlock's battle mage ability, exhaust Warlock's cape ready Adam Warlock. We have a lot of cars that will remove threat, but we're not uh, near threatening out on either of those, so uh, I think we can manage without that. We could play in betweener. So these are interesting events, so uh, we want to uh, shuffle these into the encounter deck. And when revealed, deal 2 damage to the villain and remove this card from the game. This effect cannot be cancelled. I don't think that's not that necessary at the moment. So we are playing the zone of silence. So choose a scheme and discard up to 4 cards from the top of your deck. Remove 1 threat from that scheme. Or actually... I think we're... Uh, we'll play the cape. So I'm using uh, for justice and um, heroic intuition to play the warlock's cape. Then uh, I think we'll use Adam Warlock's ability to discard uh, aggression card. So we deal two damage here. And uh, after you resolve uh, Warlock's Battle Mage ability, exhaust Warlock's Cape and ready Adam Warlock. So we're ready. And uh, I think we are just uh, hitting twice here to lower this also. So we can slowly burn them down. Uh, I think Zone of Silas can go. We want some attack spells for next turn. So we're ready up. One, two, three, four, five. We get Eternity, Soul World, Major Victory, Quasar, and Innovation. Okay, let's see. Uh, we'll go to the villain phase, so this moves here. We'll add threat to both of the main schemes. Uh, Corvus Glaive attacks and Corvus Glaive reads. After Corvus Glaive makes an undefended attack, discard the top card of the encounter deck, deal 1 damage to Avengers Tower for each damage dealt that way. So I'm defending with Adam, Adam Warlock. And uh, 1 plus 1 and boost. If damage from this attack defeats an ally, deal 3 damage to Avengers Tower. It doesn't, so we manage to negate all of the damage. And we get an encounter card. It is a Black Order Infantry. It's a guard minion. One at, uh, scheme to attack for health. Uh, when defeated, <coughs> give the villain a tough status card. So that comes into play. So that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. Now we have some choices. Uh, probably want to play. Uh, maybe play Quasar. So we get to remove one threat from its scheme, so that sounds like a good idea. Now we'll play Quasar using Innovation, Major Victory, and... Uh, well, it really doesn't matter. Uh, actually... Yeah, we can use this, so... To the Battle Mage ability, so we'll use these three cards. This lets us heal uh, one damage from an ally. So that comes into play. We remove one threat from each scheme to play. Then I'll use the battle mage ability using a leadership card. Give a hero plus one fort, plus one attack, and plus one defense this round. So I'm discarding this. I'm using the cape ready. And uh, Bossar and Adam Wallop will defeat the Black Order infantry. So give the villain a tough status card, and it is the active villain. So Corvus Glaive gets the tough. And I think uh, I'll just use uh, Martin X. Oh yeah, we healed one, and we'll heal one when we hit the tough off. Oh yeah, and uh, Quasar has one. 
damage on. So that is the hero phase. We're already up. We should draw back up to five. And we end our turn. So inspired for uh, uh, preservation, Marvel Boy, Cosmic War, and Living Tribunal. And this moves here. We'll add one threat to both main schemes and uh, proximal midnight attacks. Just checking, is it for this round? So I'm defending with Adam Warlock. And uh, 2 plus 2 is 3, uh, 4. So we take one damage. But um, yeah, we add one damage here. Okay. We get an encounter card, and it is a Black Order's procedure, so... I think we have to take the damage, so... Uh, we won't add the damage here, we'll take two damage on our identity. And that is the villain phase, so let's go to the next hero phase. Okay, now we have some choices. Uh, we can possibly defeat uh, one of the villains maybe two if we get Marvel Boy in play we can discard uh, okay it, it doesn't matter we can just play Marvel Boy play inspired not use Adam Warlock this turn. Yeah, I think that sounds good. So, uh, after you spend this card, heal one damage from the hero, and uh, we play Marvel Boy. Okay, here. Then I will... I will use the inspired fate of Quasar. Then uh, Quasar will defeat uh, this guy, Marvel Boy, and Martin X will defeat or uh, deplete the Proxima Midnight's health. So next turn we need to just hit Corvus Clave to advance to phase 2. That is all we can do, we're ready up. We'll go back up to 5. Now we get Counter Punch. That is perfect because, uh, yeah, we can deal some damage back. Uh, Karmic Blast. Cosmic Awareness, shield, uh, spell, uh, shield Spell, and Karmic Blast. Okay, let's see. Shield Spell. So, uh, when you would take any amount of damage from an attack, discard that many cards from the top of your deck to prevent all damage from that attack. So, we'll definitely use that. But we also have the Karmic Blast, so I think we do it. Uh, the Counter Punch doesn't do much because our attack is only one. Maybe not choosing that. Uh, this shifts here at the end of our player turn. We add threat to both of the schemes. Corvus Glaive attacks. I will defend with Adam Warlock. And I won't even tap. So. Oh, yeah, we deal. So, yeah, I'm defending. So we take 1, 2, 0. We don't have to spend anything. So. Uh, this time, I'm just using the counter punch to deal one damage here, and that is the attack. And uh, we get an encounter card, and it is the Black Order infantry. So we have to defeat that first before we can defeat Corvus Clave. So that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. So first thing first, we will. Uh, discard. Uh, let's see. We discard. 
protects and heal one damage from an ally. We'll do that. Be ready. We'll heal one from Quasar. Then uh, I'll use Cosmic Awareness and Karmic Blast to play Karmic Blast. We'll blast this guy away. And uh, when defeat, give the villain a tough status card and the active villain is Corvus Glaive. Well, we'll use Martinex to remove that and get defeated. We'll use Quasar to hit for three. So now both of these get defeated. Just remove them over here. Okay, so let's check. Uh, Proxima Midnight is one scheme, three attack. When Proxima Midnight attacks you, choose either deal one damage to the Avengers Tower or Proxima Midnight gets plus two attack. And again, we can't defeat before Corus Glaive also has no hit points, so hit points 12. And let's add it here. And Corus Glaive. Same thing, after Corvus Glaive makes an undefended attack, discard the uh, top card of the encounter to heal one damage to Avengers Tower for each boost icon of that card. We don't want to let Corvus Glaive do that a lot. So, 11 health on Corvus Glaive. And uh, then, uh, we, I think we're just using Marvel Boy to defend for this turn. So we are not attacking with Marvel Boy, but Adam Warlock will uh, attack for. Which one do we want to attack? And, uh, do we want to. Uh, warp maybe? No, I think we're. Trying to hopefully we get a Thwart event for next turn, and then we can cover it a lot. So I'm just hitting uh, Corpus Cave for one. That is it. Uh, we're ready up. We draw back up to five. Still have one card in the deck. Uh, Mystic Senses, uh, Karmic Staff, Magic Attack, Quantum Magic, and Pip the Troll. We'll go to the villain phase. We add one threat here, one threat here. Oh yeah, and this here. So Proxima Midnight attacks. I don't... yeah. Um, I will use Mystic Senses and Quantum Magic. Play Pip the Troll my hand so I have to use an energy and um, a mental resort to play to pip the troll into play and pip comes into play with toughness so I'm defending pip so I'm letting uh, Proxima Midnight have plus two attack for this attack so we'll get uh, five plus two is seven so we just remove the tough and counter card for this turn is a black order procedure so I think we'll add one damage onto the tower. And that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. So, we have some choices here. I think uh, Wasar will just defeat this. Then. Magic attack. We really can't use magic attack that much because we only can discard one card. So I'm just uh, I'm using I'm saving it for next turn. So uh, I'm using karmic stuff or discarding it as a energy resource for the battle mage. Before that, I'll of course hit for one here. Then I'll uh, use it to. Uh, Oh yeah, it, it has to be a justice card. Sorry, just there. Mm. 
So this is unfortunate because we can't really can't really do that much. So first, yeah, let's not hit. I'm uh, attacking forward clay or thwarting this main scheme. So it's down to four. I think we'll jump into alter ego this turn. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing anything. I'll just flip to Alter Ego. And uh, that is it. We are ready up. Draw back up to 5. Extra encounter card. We get uppercut for the last card. Probably not playing that. Shuffle off the deck and hope to get a lot of uh, spells that deal damage so we can. Try to start burning down the villains. Get three more cards. Okay, so we have uh, per uh, preservation, quantum magic, the mystic senses, uppercut, magic attack, and the harvest staff. Okay. We'll go to the villain phase, we add uh, one threat to both of the main schemes. Oh yeah, this shovels here. Uh, Corvus Glaive will scheme for two plus... Add the other villain scheme and attack to this villain scheme and attack for this activation, so... Uh, yeah, it doesn't matter because we'll just add this one to the two So we add three, but it's still only six and this advances so When this stage would be completed remove all threat from this stage instead then deal each player one day based on Encounter card so we can just get an extra encounter card. So that is just okay for this activation Then we get another encounter card so three encounter cards for this turn Advance, we'll advance, so 2 plus 1 is 3. Next one is Rainy Fire, deal 3 damage to Avengers Tower, it's up to 8, so not advancing yet. Last one is Advance, okay. Mm. Uh, two plus uh, add a one, so three, so six. This deals us one encounter card. But uh, I think because this comes after the fact, I'm not actually sure. Do we resolve that now? I think I'm resolving it now. So uh, direct assault. Uh, that's the villain who is not active yet. so it attaches to proximal midnight when attacks villain attacks the attack gains range if that attack defeats an ally deal three damage to the ninja tower at the end of the attack discard direct assault so we'll add it over here okay well that is the villain phase let's go to the next hero phase so we have some choices Adam Pollock should be readied. So I think I'm just healing. Flipping to hero mode. Then I will uh, after I spend heal contents from hero will play the magic attack. And I'll discard uh, five cards and deal one damage to the enemy for each discarded card. So one, two, three, four, five. I will lose determination, tribunal, the gardener, cosmic awareness, and punch, uh, counter punch. So not losing any attack events or stuff like that. So it's quite okay. And we'll deal five damage here. Then uh, we'll see what we do next. Uh, 
I could just... Yeah, I'm using... Uh, do I want to... I'll save the upper cut for next turn. Or actually, I'm just uh, using it uh, as this ability. So I'm using uh, Mystic Senses and Quantum Magic. The Karmic Staff. And I'm uh, using the Battle Mage ability to deal 2 damage. And I'll deal it over here. And I'm readying Adam Warlock. And uh, I think we want to warp that uh, a bit. So I'm using Pip, the troll. I'm using Adam Warlock with warp uh, for two here. And uh, we'll save the rest for next turn. Oh, yeah. so we can deal five with these two and hopefully get some way to get more damage in. So that is the whole turn we're ready up. We'll throw back up to five. We get shield, uh, shield spell, Charlie 27, Eternity, Audacity, and Heroic Intuition. So not hitting the uh, attack events that much, but hopefully we can do it in a couple of turns, maybe. We'll go to the villain phase, we add threat here, and here, oh yeah, this moves here. And, uh, let's see, so, when attacks villain attacks, the attack gains ranged. If that attack defeats an ally, deal 3 damage, so we will defend with Adam Warlock. And I'm using Adam Warlock to defend. And uh, we'll give plus two to Prophecy Midnight. Because we don't want to advance this yet. So, uh, three, four, five, six, seven, plus two, so eight, uh, nine. But we'll use the shield spell. Uh, when you would take any amount of damage from that attack, discard that many cards from the top of your deck to prevent all damage from that attack. So minus two, so we need to discard seven cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We take no damage from the attack, so lose one karmic blast, which is a shame. We really wanted to see that to deal a lot of damage, but it is what it is. Encounter card for this turn is uh, Shadow of the Past. This is really <laughs> bad, bad time to get this, so we get the Mag Magus. Uh, Magus has quick strike, toughness, uh, two attack, two uh, thwart, uh, force response. After the Magus activates against you, discard the top five cards of the deck. Then we get universal chairs of truth, force response. After a player resets their deck, exhaust the player's identity and stun it. And we get uh, zealot of truth and cosmic inquisition into the encounter deck, and it's quite thin, so probably we'll see some of those coming up sooner or later. So Magus attacks for 2 damage and uh, I'm just throwing the uh, Pip the Troll under the bus here. And uh, we'll discard five cards, one, two, five. And we lose summoning a spell, which would be nice, but it is what it is. So that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. I also forgot to add threat here. This also gives one boost or acceleration token and it affects both of these so I'll just keep it here for clarity's sake so it affects all of the main skills. So you really should get rid of that. And uh, let's see we really have to defeat Magus and get rid of that so it slows our turn up quite a bit. 
So let's see, we deal with two. Uh, five damage, we can defeat Magus with those. Or we could uh, discard Charlie 27. I think I'm doing that. I think I will play Heroic Intuition. I'll use Audacity and the Eternity. We'll deal one damage here. Oh yeah, it has toughness damage. Forgot about the toughness, so I have to recall this. Thing. Oh yeah, we have the karmic stuff. So yeah, um, I'm using the karmic stuff and eternity to play uh, heroic vision. No uh, audacity that so we deal one damage here then I will discard Charlie 27 use wall escape and deal two damage here ready up and uh, we will mm, I will force for two here rid of this and uh, Quasar will defeat Magus we're stuck with the eternity so I will keep Marvel boy around oh yeah and I forgot that this would discard after the uh, activation last turn. So, get four more cards. Now we get one Karmic Blast at least, so we can deal some damage and Cosmic Ward to help if we get a nasty uh, when revealed effect. Okay, uh, we're ready up. We Draw five, and this moves here. We'll add one threat to both of the schemes. Getting pretty clutch here, and uh, Corvus Clave attacks. I will defend with Corvus Boy. So two plus zero, so just hit Marvel Boy. And counter guard is uh, city under attack. Uh, hinder one, so we get three uh, threat on it. When defeated, the player who defeated the scheme draws one card. Okay, well, maybe we try to get rid of that. And that is the villain phase. Let's go to the next hero phase. I think we will uh, play Make the Call this turn. So I'm using Make the Call, uh, using Cosmic Ward, the stuff, and uh, Soul Ward to play Quasar. I'm just checking if I don't want any else, any, anyone else to appear. That is the best we can do. Actually, not using Soul Ward. Using Eternity. Soul Ward, I mean. So we get Quasar, we remove one threat from all of the schemes in play. And this lets us. Uh, for two here to remove this. 
and also I think I'm playing Soul World because we're uh, going through our deck so we can get a full heal from Soul World quite soon. Uh, Wasar will hit for here. Just swinging down these villains. Uh, we'll ready up. Draw back up to five. Ready. Uh, get the next extra encounter card. And this moves here. So we are nearing the end game. If we get lucky with some. Well, we have uh, one Karmic Blast. If we manage to get another one, it could possibly. And end the game next turn. We'll see. So we have three cards. Uh, we get uppercut. Uh, that might help if we can get a resource. But yeah, and we one here. Then another karmic blast. So uh, we might be able to win next turn if we don't get any nasty surprises. One damage on it. So uh, we'll add one threat to all of the schemes. And uh, Proxima Midnight uh, attacks. I I will defend. So three plus three is six minus. Four, so we take four damage, and I actually give uh, the plus, so we don't advance this. So, yeah. Then uh, encounter cards. So we get uh, we get a lot of truth, so we can't remove threat from the. Universal Church of Truth side scheme and Proxima power, so Proxima Midnight activates against you, and Quasar has to run in between, and I will give Proxima extra uh, attack for this, so 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 damage, and Quasar is defeated, but that's okay, because next turn we can play both of the Karmic Blast and hopefully defeat both of them. So that is that turn. Let's go to the next turn. We'll start by playing one of the Karmic Blasts. I'll use the Staff Uppercut. And uh, we deal 4 damage here. Then we discard 4 cards. And uh, how does it read? Uh, one additional damage to that enemy for each different aspect discarded, so we only hit, unfortunately, aggression and justice, so we deal extra damage. Then we'll play the other. Last and uh, hit Rose Clay for four. Do the same, one, two, three, four. So we're unfortunately one damage short. But here uh, we got aggression and protection, so at least that's an in zero. I will flip to Alter Ego, exhaust this, heal up to full. And next turn, hopefully, <laughs> we can just deal the one damage from the midnight. So uh, we'll ready up. One, two, three, four, five, six. We get the Gardener Charlie 27, Karmic Blast. If the troll, quantum magic, and cosmic awareness, so we should be able to defeat uh, the villains next turn. 
will go to the villain phase, we are threats, so this advances. So uh, when this stage would be completed, remove all threat from this stage instead, then deal 6 damage to Avengers Tower. So it doesn't matter, we just deal 6 here and this flips. Uh, when revealed, discard each other Avenger Tower from play. Force response after damage is placed here. If there is at least 9 damage per player here, the players lose the game. So there is no damage there yet. Oh uh, yeah, this should go here. So Corvus Clave will uh, force to 2 plus... Heal two damage from the active villain and give it top status card. Okay, well, that changes things a bit. Okay, I think we're still able to do something. So this also skins one here, and we get an encounter card, and it is another shield of truth. So we are okay. So let's uh, go to the next hero phase and the game. So first thing we do is to flip to uh, hero mode. I'll discard one card. Oh, let's just hit the top off. I'll discard one card to deal two damage over here. Or our discard an aggression. We don't have an aggression card. Oh yeah, I'm, before that I'm playing Quantum Magic, discard, uh, play it with the staff, getting a magic attack, I'll discard magic attack to deal the 2 damage, then I'll uh, use the cape to ready, and last action I'll just Karmic Blast the hell out of the Proxima Midnight, and we don't even need to discard anything, so yeah. That was an interesting game, so we were able to defeat uh, both Proxima Midnight and Corvus Glaive with Adam Warlock's pre-built deck on standard difficulty. Uh, this scenario feels like a really interesting one uh, when you start playing it on harder difficulties or stuff like that. On this it felt quite pleasant and challenging already playing the uh, pre-built deck, so really, um, a again, a good scenario from the Mad Titans Shadow Box. So, hope you guys liked this playthrough, thanks for watching, and until next time.